Hello folks and welcome. Linux Mint 21.2 XFCE Desktop got released on Sunday. XFCE Desktops are very popular with a lot of folks. It also is more forgiven on some computers. So I have also um, the Cinnamon and Mate videos already posted. So this one is on XFCE. So welcome folks. Filming in 1920 by 1080. My video will be more than two minutes and my videos all have ch chapters and timelines. There's lots of different ways I can give you system information, but I'll just do it this way. I'm going to use, um, actually, INXI. And I'll make this a little bit larger for you if you like. So again, um, Linux Mint released um, 21.2 Victoria, uh, I believe on last Sunday, Ubuntu 2204. Um, some folks are saying I mispronounced words. They're probably correct because my English Icelandic sometimes gets uh, a little bit mixed. But in either case, I'm going to continue, XFCE 4.18.1. The 5.15 series kernel is installed by default. You can also install the 5.19 and also the 6.2. I'll talk about some of that a little bit later if I get time. Today I'm filming in 1920 by 1080. This video will have timelines and chapters. So if you're brand new to Mint, uh, welcome. I'm going to use Alt and F4 to close this. First, I'm going to give you some uh, documentation. I'm going to go through uh, generally the first steps, and then I'm going to give you some tips and tricks and overview. So if you are going to Linux Mint's website, you can download the ISO, burn it onto a USB stick or thumb drive, and uh, give that uh, USB stick thumb drive or DVD, I should say, and give that a test drive. If you decide to install, uh, maybe check out the release notes, and I'll show you what's new or at least uh, point out what they have here for uh, information. You will see me do some other stuff and I'll discuss uh, some of that stuff as I go forward. But right now I'm just resizing text. 21.2 XFCE Desktop. I do encourage that you subscribe if you've never seen my videos. I do have lots of material and uh, lots of material also on other Linux distros. 21.2 XFCE is supported until 2027. Again, the, the code name is Victoria. The slick reader is found in your login screen, kind of at the top right hand corner. You can click the little keyboard and there's a whole bunch of different multiple keyboard layouts and some other goodies to go with it. The software manager, if you're brand new to Mint, special welcome to you. Um, the software manager has a new UI refresh user interface in general, uh, if you are new to Mint, there's three ways to install software. Software Manager, the most popular, then Synaptic Package Manager, and then of course Terminal. Uh, there's a lot of references to Flatpak software in here, and I'll talk about some of that stuff a little bit later. Also the File Manager. I'm going to make this thing a little bit larger for you. 168 new features and usable user visible changes. Um, so, you know, some of you folks may appreciate some of the stuff and uh, a lot of things are also under the hood. And I'm, I'm also pleased to see that support. But there's a lot of things that have been updated, let's put it that way. So uh, 21.2 comes in three flavors, Cinnamon, Mate, and XFC. On Linux Mint's website, there's also LMDE5, Linux Mint Debian Edition. Okay, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. If you don't mind, I'm going to resize this a little bit smaller, 160 or 150, somewhere in there. So uh, Clem made some screenshots of look and feel for uh, folder icons. There's a whole bunch of different types of themes and icon sets. I mean a whole bunch. When I get into the file manager, I'll also show you some tips and tricks in there. Okay, another uh, scrolling down, all my videos have timelines and chapters if I'm going too fast for you. You can also watch all my videos on your big screen TV if you got a smart TV with a YouTube app. You'll see these bubbles when you click on things or point at things, I should say, point at things on some areas. And uh, for you folks that have came over from the Linux, uh, sorry, the Microsoft Windows world or dual boot even, um, maybe you will recognize some of these keyboard commands. Control C is very common for copy, Control V for paste. So lots of keyboard shortcuts are available in Linux Mint. And uh, Warpinator is used for local file sharing, if you're going to use that. I would also suggest checking your firewall rules in case you turn on your firewall. The firewall uh, for this XFCE distribution is GuffW. 
and it comes deactivated. You have to turn it on, in other words. Artwork and main components. LM21.2 XFCE desktop 4.18. The standard Linux kernel that it installs is a 5.15. There is a, a 5.19 and also a um, 6.2. In other words, there are some higher version kernels available also. If I get some time, I'll touch on that. Ubuntu 2204 package base. All right, on well, my Slandic, maybe I'm not pronouncing that word, but you get the idea. LTS, long-term support strategy until 2027. I'm gonna use Alt and F4 to continue. And then I'm gonna click on the help. There's a lot of nice folks on these web forums and IRC chat rooms. I'm not part of that group. But more importantly, if you need some help, you may want to check that out. There's folks like myself also all that make videos. I also do videos for other Linux distros. I used to have a previous channel also. You can read that about if you become a subscriber in my belt section. So contribute. You may want to think about Clem and his great team of producing all these Linux Mint distributions over the years. They've always done a great job. Let's talk about first steps. You installed the system and I encourage that you go through this. Desktop colors, launch, and pick a style. There's a whole bunch of them. Same thing with icon sets, or you may wanna just leave the defaults. The font, I, I did change from a 10 to a 12 and that's easily done, plus or drag. You can also investigate the dots per inch and the scaling. Snapshots, that's time shift. Uh, it generally uses rsync. I also have some rsync videos on my YouTube site for personal backups and also grsync. But snapshots, please activate that, otherwise you can't use TimeShift to make system snapshots. If you just follow the simple instructions, you'll be ready to go in a couple seconds and it'll quietly be making backups throughout the week. Driver Manager, I encourage that you investigate and also definitely the Update Manager. The uh, system settings, I'll come back. I'll open up the software manager later, but it has lots of applications. And the firewall is deactivated. You'll enable it either here or through settings. Lots of options. So you don't want to see the welcome screen anymore, turn this off. There's another way you can close any window instead of using the X is Alt and F4. Alt and F4 it is. Walking through the panel first, and then I'll go through the menu. And then I'll talk about possibly this icon if I have some time. This is a shutdown now icon. And I'll give you some cautions when that is happening or when I create this, I should say. All right, so the time and date thing, it's uh, in 24 o'clock format, it's just a simple calendar. So my volume thing has the mixer also, battery information on my wireless toys, my mouse and the keyboard, my network thing, my uh, the shield, if it has a dot on it, you got an update. You can also force it to check by right clicking and hitting refresh. Notification thing, Bluetooth thing, simple screen recorder is what I'm recording with. And uh, let's talk about the file manager, Thunar. So um, let me talk about a couple of tips and tricks also while I'm at it. So Thunar is the file manager for most XFCE distributions. So Linux Mint makes three different desktops. Cinnamon uses Nemo. Um, XFC uses Thunar and Mate uses Kaja. There's a lot of similarities also and some dissimilarities. First of all, resizing the window. Double clicking on this line is what I'm using. You can do it the old fashioned way. Resizing icons, I'm gonna do it first my way and then I'll show you the path on how to do this if you have never seen any of my videos. So I'm gonna go from the smallest size to the largest size, all in a heartbeat and in between. You can do it the old fashioned way. On a cinnamon desktop, there's usually a little drag line down here you can also do, but in general, you're gonna be clicking zoom in and out or normal size. You can also use the keyboard equivalent, hold down the control key and hit plus, plus, plus. Hold down the control key, minus, minus, minus. Hold down the control key and zero, not O, zero for normal size. So let's demo some of that. Control zero, that's normal size icon. Holding down the control key, plus, 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 plus. Holding down the control key, minus, 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 and one more minus, and another minus. A lot of pounding on that keyboard. I'm gonna substitute the plus, minus, and the zero for my method. 
and all I'm doing here is holding down the control key using my USB based computer mouse scroll wheel to scroll forward, scroll back, scroll forward, scroll back and in between. You have a touchpad, you may want to try this, hold down the control key, take two fingers and slide them up and down on your touchpad. If not, do it the old fashioned way. This does come in handy when you're looking at thumbnails. The thumbnails behave a little differently with Nemo, which is in your Cinnamon desktop. If you uh, click on an image and hit the space bar, it opens up a preview in, uh, in this Thunar file manager for Mint. It opens up XVR. However, clicking the space bar repeatedly will just cycle through the photos. If you have digital photos, right click properties, image, you will pull in information if it is attached to the image. That one's taken with an iPhone 10. I believe it's my wife's phone. Okay, so spacebar to get open or double click, your choice. The file manager behavior is set for double click, just like it is in Nemo for the Cinnamon desktop. I'm going to demo some of the other stuff in here. Here's a document, spacebar, holding down the control key, resizing text on the fly, holding down the control key while scrolling, Alt and F4 to close. PDF. Spacebar to open, hold down the control key, scroll back, makes it dinky, scrolling forward, blows it up, in between. Alt and F4, Alt and F4, well actually no, not Alt and F4. I'm going to go to the main screen. This is very common when you um, can click Control H for modern Linux file managers to show hidden files and folders. Okay. So control H, I should probably go full screen here and I'll resize. In a cinnamon desktop for Linux Mint, if you click the settings and the themes, it will automatically check for that folder. If it finds it missing in your home folder, it generates that folder automatically without your knowledge. What I put in here are mouse pointers. For a lot of Linux distro, I manually create this and I had to do the same here. You can create that folder yourself. You can put as many mouse themes as you can. This one's called radioactive. The mouse themes that come with the system are these. The only reason I'm using this yellow one is to just to get your attention. These are all installed by default. All the black and white ones. They're installed USR share icon folder. I used to show that pretty heavily on my last YouTube channel. Now you can see those blue bubbles. This is the only one that is installed in dot icons. That's not protected by root permissions. These are. If you install a new user, they'll get everything except that one. All right, with that said, I'm going to continue. So that's the dot icons folder, if you're curious. Some distributions auto-generate this, and Linux Mint does, I believe, for um, sorry, for um, Cinnamon, and I think Mate also generates that. However, you can always right-click and create that folder on any Linux distro. If you've seen any of my videos, you'll know what I'm talking about. Mouse pointers are normally only in installed in two places, dot icons and USR share icons on any Linux distro. Alt, I'm sorry, not Control H. And now I'm gonna do an Alt F4. Now I'm gonna continue. Um, I am going to show you my history buffer real quick. So I'm gonna blow this up. This is a typical install command manual install for software, sudo apt install, and then space and what the name of the software is, or package or application. Simple screen is what I'm using today. Okay, Alt and F4. All right, the menu. I'm gonna first add two icons. One is a dedicated shutdown icon with a timer and a dedicated restart icon with a timer. And then I'm gonna show you how to resize icons. Resizing the box itself is pretty simple. So the new Cinnamon desktop, you can also do this with. If that option was just available on 21.2 for Cinnamon. But this has been available, I think, for a long time with the XFC desktops. All right. Right click, properties, commands, shutdown, restart, close. Turns on these two. 60 seconds, you can walk away from the machine. It will actually turn off in 60 seconds. Or you can force it 
or cancel. Restart, same thing. I can go and get some coffee right now and it'll restart my machine after so many seconds and cancel. Icon sizes, right click on the icon, properties. This is normal size. I'm gonna show you very large. I call them jumbo. There you go. Excessively large, I call them. So I'm gonna switch that back to normal. You can see all the options. And I'm gonna switch that back. Okay. Close and reopen. All right, I like this size. So you got a nice search feature in here too. If you don't like the black icon, right click, properties, appearance, click the mint icon, type in the word mint, and you can find some different derivatives. Most of them are green though. Okay. You can also bring in your own icons, image files. You can also uh, display this differently. This is normally how your system comes. I don't remember what the title is. I want to say it says menu or applications. I don't know which, but I added this Linux Mint 21.2 XFCE manually. This is not here normally, FYI. All right, that's all I'm going to discuss about that. Let me go through the menus. Starting at the top, your username and uh, the little icon. Sys, uh, the settings manager is where I changed that little guy. And you can pick little cutesy little things like that. You can fill in the blanks. Again, my username is Mint212 today. You can see that on my terminal window. You can also see that in the file manager. Okay, with that said, appearance. I showed that during the welcome screen. This is just another shortcut in a bigger format. Desktop. Here's your wallpapers. You can also right click and hit it in a different way. But more importantly, pick, pick your backgrounds or wallpaper. Menus and icons. Are you fond of putting icons on your desktop? If you are, you may want to investigate the size. And by default, by default, Linux Mint 20.2, 21.2 XFCE turns these off by default. You have a perfectly good file manager right here. You got your trash can, you got your home folder, you got your devices, you got everything you need. All of these icons are available right from this click. However, if you want to use that, that's fine. I also have another icon here, and when I make this really big, it'll jump over to here. But I'm going to actually copy that for a second, because what I'm going to do is manually crank that up to 192. That's maximum. Okay, that's the size of those icons, maximum size. I'm going to put that number back in there and hit enter. So this is the normal size. And then I'll move this back. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. I don't normally care for icons, but in case you do, desktop. All right, desktop settings and notification, I'm going to skip over. Uh, panels, you can adjust your panel here or right click on the panel and click it here. Auto hide panels are located right here or intelligently hide. Intelligent. Uh, intelligently just mean that anybody anything that comes near this panel will auto hide it or if you go full screen that's all you can resize this okay and uh, right now it's not resizing so I will open it up this way now you can see it resizing I don't recommend turning that off because uh, if you do it this way that's what you get all right, it's kind of weird. If you want to rearrange the furniture, whether you do it here or in the setup screen, I'm going to do it in the setup screen. Okay, whether you do it in there or in here, make a screenshot. It's easier to do it in here, actually, for the screenshot. And uh, the whisker menu is that, and then you can see the rest of the elements. Rearranging the furniture is what I mean by these different positions of these icons. Screenshots is recommended if you're going to play. Okay, so that was panel. Window manager, if you uh, want to move these buttons around or switch these two guys, you do it through here. You can drag this directly over here if you want those icons there. Okay, uh, where am I at? I'm going to skip over these two. If you decide to change your resolution and everybody's monitor and graphics cards are different, 
and you're switching resolution and refresh rate and you hit apply and the screen goes black for more than six seconds, don't touch the keyboard, don't touch your mouse. Allow it to time out. If you click on something, you could inadvertently click OK. And if your screen is black, that means the resolution mode didn't work. Just want to caution you on that one. All right, mouse and touchpad. This is the only one, I'm sorry. These are the only ones you get. The radioactive are manually installed. That one's installed in dot icons. These are installed in USR share icons. All right. Um, where am I at here? Power manager, power button. You may want to click it to ask. If, it, if you do that, it does this. Okay, other than that, I'm going to continue. Accessibility default, driver manager investigate, firewall comes turned off, it's GovW, you can certainly turn it on. Software manager, software sources, I will open these a little bit later, and update manager a little bit later also. Okay, going through the quickly through the menus, again, my video has timelines and chapters, if I didn't say that earlier. Okay, I'll open up software manager just a little bit later. Accessories, lots of tools, lots of toys. Okay, graphics, internet. So you've got web apps. If you want to create simple web-based icons, there's actually two ways I have, but that's another animal. I added simple screen recorder manually through terminal. Office, LibreOffice, I believe it's 7.3 current version, and dictionary. Settings, shortcut to the settings and system. Personal backup tool. Again, if you also want some options for um, rsync. Now, TimeShift also uses rsync for backing up stuff under general conditions for your system files, but you can also use rsync to back up your personal files. I have many videos on that. And also grsync. rsync with scripts and also grsync. Now I'll open up Software Manager and Synaptic after that. You can do searches. You can make this bigger. Hamburger menu time. This is um, Mint install. Another name for that is Software Manager 8.2.8. .8. Featured, categories, top rated. I'll click on VLC because it has two versions. Even though some of this will say flat out and some of them will not, some of these do have two, two different versions. So screenshot. Sometimes you'll see arrows on the side. And then also you may want to take a look at the download and also what it's consuming on your disk. 67 megabytes on the disk space is required for this one. It says system package on it with the Linux Mint logo. If you click the download arrow key, this is Flatpak software from flathub.org. This one has a different screenshot and it also has an arrow. You can see the difference. However, take a look at the download side and the disks required. 3.3 gigabytes required. Why is this so large? It's self-contained is my best description. It doesn't need any other goodies. It's all in here. That's why it's larger. So if you're concerned with disk space, you may want to take a look at some of these things once in a while. There is a lot of reasons why people use Flatpak. It could be versions or other reasons, and I'm not going to get into all of those in this video. But the install key is here nonetheless, and the screenshots are different. Okay, you get lots of things that also have two of something. GIMP is another one. GIMP is like Photoshop. VLC is another one. I just talked about that one, didn't I? Okay, <laughs> let me click on something different. How about if we do a search? So GIMP is like Photoshop. It also has a lot of, well, different tools that you can also install. You can see all the references to GIMP. All right, so this is the FlatHub version and this is the standard version. It doesn't matter which one I click on, I can get either one of them through the same tab. So the system package is 104 installed, 20 meg download. And the Flatpak version is 1.1 gig download, 3.5 gig space required. Different screenshots. Okay, and when you click on screenshots for your new folks, just because you see it in a different language does not mean the application is automatically in that language. 
It depends on the language packs you have installed. FYI. All right, so that's a search. And then I'll go back to the main menu. So Software Manager is very popular. What's the next one in line? Um, we're going to talk about Synaptic. I'm going to skip over software sources because that contains that information in here. Synaptic Package Manager is another way to install software. This password, by the way, you'll get when you have updates here. It's the same one. Now that I was talking here, I have to retype my password. 71,434 packages are listed in here. 2131 are installed. All right. Where's the stuff coming from? Um, Mint and Ubuntu. All right. Remember, a little bit of Icelandic there, so pronunciation may not be accurate, but close enough. Uh, some distributions, the icon ledgers may be different color, but Synaptic is found also in, in other places with different icon colors. It's very simple to install anything here. You just click that, mark it for installation. If it needs other goodies, other packages, you mark them, and then you hit apply. You can also do searches by name if you know the package name, or you can do the description and name. Very simple tool to use. Um, the software manager is preferred by a lot of people, but you can certainly use this also. There are screenshot tools in some things and some things that are not. I'll give you an example of that right now. I'm going to open up this at the same time, and some distributions don't like to have two things open at the same time. But I'm going to click Variety, and I want you to see that there's no screenshot here. However, I'm going to use the same keyword and use Synaptic Package Manager for a search for the same thing. Well, okay, I'll type it in manually. I thought I copied it right. I guess I didn't. This one has a screenshot, and it's be a full screenshot. Today is July 20th. It's not October 25. This is a full screen screenshot. So that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of difference between Synaptic and that. So one more time, 71,434 packages. This does not contain Flatback, only Software Manager. So yes, you do have more than 71,000 packages listed. Alton F4, go back to there. And um, how about system reports? This is another way you can get system information. All right, so you have all the, let me make this full screen. You have the kernel in here. You have the distro. You have the machine type, including motherboard. You can also copy this information and paste it in a web browser to see what kind of motherboard you have without opening the box, opening up your case. Battery, CPU, graphics, let me continue here. Audio, network, Bluetooth, drives, partitions, USB stuff, sensors, repos. Where's the stuff coming from? There's another way of looking at it. The only thing that's not listed in here is Flatpak from flathub.org. That's the only thing that's not listed here. Okay, other than that, you have some additional info down there. Close. So lots of information that you can get from system reports. Task Manager, Thunar the File Manager, I think I've talked about already. Time Shift, don't forget to activate. And uh, for you folks that want to add some additional users because you want to keep them out of your bookmarks and possibly out of your folders, you want to create users. Two types, standard and administration type. The standard cannot install software and do system-wide changes. That's all I want to say about the menu. Okay, right-clicking on the screen. We have Create Launcher, Create URL Links. I also call them Poor Men's Web-Based Icons. That's just my name. Create Folder, Text File, Open Terminal, Open File Manager's Root Mode, Create Link, Search, Open New Window, Arrange Desktop Icons, Desktop Settings. Same thing as in your Setup Menus. I mean your this menu here. Okay. And now I'm going to talk about a couple of things. First, I'll talk about the Linux kernel. Then I'll talk about creating this icon and this icon. So Linux kernels, click on the shield. I'm going to give you the Linux kernel spiel. It's under view. Before you continue, think about things if you've never done this. First of all, take a digital screenshot of this. Use your camera or your smartphone. Probably the best and quickest way. But before you continue, answer this question. Is everything working on your system? 
All right, so basically what I'm saying is your hardware is working, all your hardware is working, and uh, basically all your software. You probably don't need to upgrade your kernel. However, for the folks that want to live on the edge, then I'm going to continue. You can always revert back to your previous kernel on a reboot. All right, the kernel that's installed is a 5.15 series kernel. This number will change over time. You can also install the 5.19 series kernel. It's not installed. It's available. 6.2 also. 6.2.0.25. One more time. If things are working for you, I would stick with a current kernel. This, of course, is a higher kernel. So is that one. But is everything working for you? I would probably just leave it alone. When you're doing your updates, that uh, last one here, this one that you're currently using, will upgrade eventually. It'll keep going up, not down. And sometimes, uh, if you've watched um, some of the Linux distros in the past, sometimes a series of kernels goes obsolete. Anyways, this says it's supported until 2027, and so is, this one is supported until 2024. Mm -hmm. Trust me, there will be a newer kernel before this date expires. Historically, been done all the time. All right, creating this icon and creating this icon can be done rather easily. Create launcher, LOG. Third item. Create twice, once, twice, you're done. Put it anywhere on your desktop, you got a multifunction icon. Right click. Open with Create Launcher, puts it in the corner. They're independent. You can delete that if you like. It's still working. This one, on the other hand, when you double click, it shuts down the system, no questions asked. So if you're going to use something like that, please save all your files first before using stuff like this. Right click, Create Launcher. All right, give it a name. This is a good name for it. Skipping over comments and a command. I'll show you the command in a second. Working directory I don't use, no icon. I'm going to click and type in SHU and all the icons. You have to be in this field. There's the icon here. You can use that one. Name and command is all you need and hit create. What is the command for this? Shut down, lowercase, space now. This is unforgiven. You can have stuff open and as soon as you double click this, it will shut down your system. On some Linux distros, when I teach this, I tell people to be careful if they have single click turned on on their desktops. Because if you're moving this icon, you inadvertently click that, it powers down your system. Sometimes you don't want to use that. It's your choice. This one is a more safer icon, and so is this one. All right, but I thought I'd give you that option. Right click URL. I'm gonna make an Amazon icon, just using the letter A. Skipping over comments, www.amazon.com. All right, I'm gonna, you can either use this icon and hit create or pick an icon from the system. I believe they have one available, so I'm gonna use it. Don't expect to find your all your web-based icons in here. And I'm, I'm done with that one. You could resize the innards using my method of holding down the control key and scroll wheel. Your mouse has to be underneath this line when you do this. All right, you can also right click and open with Create Launcher on panel. It'll stick the icon exactly where this one is, and then you can move it around anywhere you have a red line. However, when you delete these, these are not part of your menus. I'm gonna type in A to let you see it doesn't find this icon. It finds about, and anything else it starts with A by typing that search criteria. I'll use the capital letter A also. You'll see what I'm talking about. This is not part of your menu when you create them this way. A safer way to create these is use this tool right here. Okay, web-based icons. I don't really use the keyboards, but I thought I'd show this anyways. Hamburger menu time about. This is this version of web apps. And the website really doesn't have any definitive way of uh, having a full-size manual. It's got a readme or an FAQ. And a lot of people are trying to figure out how to use this. That's why I make these kind of videos. Let me show you how to do this without any coding skills. You can do this for any website, practically. 
plus is to add minus to remove pencil to edit and that's a launch key and I don't even use that so really just the three keys I use let me create the same Amazon icon a I can also uh, www.amazon.com I gotta type it right uh, by the way you can also cut and paste addresses from web browsers in here uh, don't expect it to find an icon all the time it's a very rare thing you normally are going to be clicking that a lot and sometimes up to three times and if it doesn't find anything then click that and assign an icon to it you can ins uh, even assign silly stuff to it okay these are just icons all right so the web category hasn't been created yet because i haven't finished creating this icon web apps is a creation tool it's very simple to use firefox web browser is the only one I have installed. Web category I usually leave alone. You can choose others if you like. The custom, uh, custom parameters I'm not going to talk about today. You can watch my other videos on, on, LM, on Linux Mint 21.1 Cinnamon for custom parameters. I make mention of that in there. I am fond of the navigation bar though. Private incognito window I don't use. I'm done. Now that is now available in the web category under A. You can also search for that. Okay, it's found it right here. Two differences between the Cinnamon desktop and XFCE. On the XFCE, you can drag and drop this icon. On a Cinnamon desktop, you have to right click and add to desktop. However, on a Cinnamon desktop, you can drag and drop right in between here. You can't do that with this one. You can drag it down here and find a red line and then drop it. You could also do on both systems as, as do these three guys. Okay, but more importantly, I'm gonna drag this icon down here and I'm gonna actually move this around until I find a red line. See, I'm having a problem finding it. There we go. Now it's triggered. On a cinnamon, you just drag and drop. It's that quick. However, once I get it down here, then I can move this around. Single click. Okay, I'm gonna have to answer the question here. I wanna get rid of the privacy. It's a nag screen from Amazon. That's okay. It thinks I'm a robot. Now, now that it's created, it's up to Firefox to keep login information in case you have uh, an account. Other than that, you can just go shopping. Scrolling in, 30%. Scrolling back out to something more reasonable, like 120% or 40. I'm gonna let go of the control key. Remember, holding down the control key and scrolling, resize this. Not only in the web browser, but file managers also. All right, so 140%, this icon will still have the same, but the first time you open it, you may get that. So click that and you're done. Get rid of the show me, it's still 140%. The same as this icon. If I resize this to 220 and close it, this will be 220. It's just linked to the web page. The cool thing about these icons though, you can temporarily put in tabs and they'll be deleted afterwards. Control T, 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 three tabs. This one is Amazon. These are other web browser tabs. I can put in some other information. Close and reopen, the tabs are gone, okay? Now I am going to show you a nifty little trick here. I'm going to do the same thing again, multiple tabs, control T. And uh, I'll just put in two of these. So instead of aiming for the X in the corner, I can also just take my mouse pointer. My mouse has a, a scroll wheel with a switch underneath it. Listen very carefully. I'm pushing straight down on my scroll wheel. There's a switch under there. It's called a middle click. And I'm gonna use that to close this tab without aiming for the X. My mouse pointer just has to be anywhere in this square. Close, 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 close. And if I do the last one, it closes. Reopening that, it's just the one tab because that's the web-based icon you created. You can do as many of these as you want. Thank you for watching, folks.